Pick one. Good. <laughs> So, Ashkan, uh, tell me, um, what motivated your original interest to seek out an organization like ours? Well, I, uh, the reason I got motivated or uh, I started looking for a place like this was because um, I started reading a lot of stuff on social media, on media in general, and then uh, I realized that there's uh, definitely something missing uh, from the discussion and that um, there are a lot of issues that exist um, that are never talked about, never brought up, um, and it's generally speaking, it's, I, I found that it's, it's men's voices and issues that um, never get as much exposure or any exposure. Um, and until we address the issue and we acknowledge that it exists, we're not going to be able to solve it. And uh, there are a lot of issues for, for boys and men that um, need solving. Why do you think the issues don't get raised as much as they should be? Well, I mean, I think the historic uh, side of it is that historically, um, it, it was always women that um, didn't have the rights, didn't have a voice, didn't have any support. Um, and because I, I feel like although a lot has changed um, uh, on the practical side of things, society still views men as, um, as the abusers, as the ones with the ones who create the problems as opposed to the ones that could also have problems, could also have issues. So, um, and I think it's just easier for as far as media goes, it's a lot easier and more um, with the current to talk about women's issues as opposed to men's issues. It's, it's almost like it's not popular, so let's not talk about it. How do you see um, this new initiative, this Canadian Centre for Men and Families, how do you see it responding to some of those unmet needs? Um, well, I think, I, think, um, I think this place is doing a great job because, um, first of all, I mean, it's, it's uh, no secret that there have been a lot of challenges and adversities that the, we had to overcome. Uh, in order to get where we are today, yeah. which is actually, I just want to say on a side note that I'm very proud to be here because this is this is something that was, you know, it was something that I always wanted to happen, but I wasn't sure we were going to get here. Um, I, I think we try that we try to have a very unbiased, um, fair outlook on issues, um, which is very important, um, especially doing what we do, um, and it's it's just something that I like. I'm very happy to be here because it's. I did not expect this to happen. With the center opening, I mean, if you could look like five years, ten years, or further into the future, I mean, how do you see changes happening? Um, well, okay, the point that I wanted to make is, even though I've, I've been involved with this for um, a little under two years now, um, I already see a huge change as far as uh, the public opinion, which is very important. Um, I, I see that more and more people seem to be... Um, seem to be um, aware of the issue. They're more willing to listen, which is very important because I, I find that um, three, four years ago, um, people weren't even willing to listen. As, as soon as the topic would come up, they would just brush it off as, as you know, misogynistic, just basically what, what they're usually told by media. But now more, more people are aware of it and, and um, a lot of men, a lot of women um, are, are realizing that, okay, there are issues that we need to discuss and not everything is misogyny, not everything is um, a couple of issues that like people are becoming more aware of is the male suicide rates in Canada. It's uh, four times out of uh, women attempted suicide. Um, child custody, men almost, almost 87% of the time, according to the Canadian government's website, they lose uh, custody of their children. Exclusive custody is given and granted to mothers. Um, uh, male students uh, are the rates are uh, dropping in post-secondary uh, programs. Um, less and less male students are going to school. We need to address why this is happening, and it's been uh, on a current, uh, on a constant uh, rate since the 70s. Um, other issues with uh, with false accusations and how men can and can defend themselves against false and and the key word is false accusations. Um, there are a lot of things that basically need to be addressed. And not many people were willing to bring it up, and I like the fact that um, we're we're starting the, the, the conversation. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Great. Is there anything else you want to say? Um, I just want to say that I'm really really glad to be here. Um, this is uh, this has been, uh, like I said, it's it's almost like a, an, a dream that's been uh, realized. Um, there were a lot of adversities, but thanks to you guys, thanks to everyone who volunteered, thanks to everyone, all the support from from the community that's growing. Um, with everyone's help, with everyone's attentions, and with all the initiatives people are taking, because this is a passion project, and people are people are doing it because they really believe in it. Um, we are here, 
we're at a place, that, this is a very historical moment. Uh, we are here and we're, we're here to stay and grow and help make a better society for everyone. Because, because a, a healthy society on both ends for, for male and female um, is only achieved when we have healthy, happy people on both sides of uh, the equation, not just one. Um, my name is Ashkan Yousefi. I, uh, I support boys, men's, and, and families, and that's why I'm here uh, with Canadian Center for Men and Families, and I'm very proud to be here.